metal for, which are made for, made for kitchens, but they actually have been inserted into the wall. Very good. You remember seeing, um, do you remember Ernestine? Sorry, what was that? Ernestine. Ernestine? The operator on Rowan and Martin's years ago. No. One ringy dingy, two re ringy dingy. Okay, I've heard of that, yep, yeah. yep. Well, this is the type of board she used. That's a 555. It was meant for businesses and banks. And okay. Like that. It wasn't ex an exchange board. But uh, I got this from, well, actually, it sounds strange, but I got this from a couple of banks down in Summerside, and uh, there were two switchboards in partial condition. Okay. So I built up one board of the two of them. So that's why uh, when I say I got it from banks, I mean that literally. Wow. It was, uh, it was a piece of junk that had been in the farmer's barn for years. Another yard sale? Uh, no, actually, he's, he's a seller, a furniture seller. A furniture seller? He had that. There's a couple of log balls. That one there was used during the period where uh, they had, uh, where they had uh, the dials, most of the exchanges were dialed, but the country was still uh, magneto, and they weren't making magneto sets anymore, or at least very limited quantities. So they ordered this one from Britain, which was drank. It was the only way they could get a magneto set at that, at that time. Uh, that one there is the ship's phone, or one of the ship's phones from the old Prince Edward Island car ferry. Oh, okay. Uh, that was, yeah, they'd have a different room or a different ring for every area of the ship. Would that have come off the Abiquate? No, the Prince nope. Edward Island. Oh, okay. Before the Abiquate. Oh, okay. Wow. Jeez, the Prince Edward Island, now let's see. Now, the Prince Edward Island was scrapped. And the Attic Week became the home of the Chicago uh, Yacht Club. The original Attic Week. Then there was an Attic Week 2, which was scrapped over Bangalore, India. Okay. I took the ferry myself in the in the 70s a few times. Mm -hmm. And then I remember the days when it was... Uh, the Attic Week. If you remember a boat that had four smokestacks on her. Right. That was the P Prince Edward Island. Okay. And the one that this came from. Hmm. And then as we go around the museum, um, this is the phone you think of? Yes, that's yeah, it. That's, that's made by Automatic Electric. That that was made in my hometown, Broadfoam. Oh, okay. And it was made, most likely, one year remembering, was made in this factory. That was the new AE plant. It was built two years after it was born. The one I saw was beige in color of that. <coughs> yeah. And made, he had a... made different colors. Oh, I'm trying to remember what kind of price he had on that. Three hundred dollars? <laughs> that's a little cheap. Yeah, that's what I thought too. I thought I paid forty for that. Right. No. <laughs> the but Ontario yeah. market sure marks stuff up. I'm yeah, telling you. Well, you get into businesses too. If you're buying them privately, they're cheaper. Right. Or from collectors. But these are all automatic electric phones. You see, growing up in Brockville, I've got a little passion for automatic electric. Okay. And. Uh, yeah, so they made basically an equivalent line to the Northern Electric and Western Electric. Okay. Uh, but they were all different, eh? They okay. Had their own way of making them. And there's an interesting thing. A friend of mine in BC is an installer for, well, he used to be BC Tell, now Tell Us. And that was in the British Columbia prison system. And they, it's just called the Secretary of Lansing's Unit. They modified that. So they could use it to listen to prisoners' phone calls. Prisoners would have to make their call through that, and by flicking the switch up, they'd be listening to the call. Okay. Just a little bit of a neat story with that one. Yeah. yeah. And then, we get rid of this way, one more the phones, and the early cell phones, and the pre-cell phones. Now you see those all over the island. Yeah. Right. Yep. And the ones that are out in the porch and out in the booth there, you can see that type. 
And then this is, uh, came before the cell phones. That's actually a radio that was used. First time I saw one of those was in, uh, I was in, uh, New York area, and they had one of those Motorola phones. Yeah. Yeah. And there is one of the very first brick phones, the first cell phones. Uh-huh. Right. In 1984. Now, will those still work on the island if Not you anymore. activate it? No. It would up till about a year and a half ago. Because of all the analog they, they and digital? Shut down the analog, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I used to have a bag phone like that. Mm -hmm. yeah, I first. Great. The, the, the boat owners loved them, man. Yeah. Then I had the flip. The power. Then I had that flip phone. Yeah. See, I could go well. I've got and then, and then we're down to one that I'm holding in my hand right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're even smaller, so. That's right. Yeah, it's quite amazing. And over here, now I was kind of hoping, I've got that thing on today, kind of hoping somebody would call, but this is the demo of uh, switching. I should be able to do this as long as nobody calls at the same time. And there's another line over there, but I just don't want to take a chance of running into somebody. I'll explain that later. Okay. They're coming over the network and dialing into it, so. Oh. Yeah, there have been a few calls today, so. It creates um, it creates problems. Uh, well, it would create problems, lines. yeah, if, if they, the two of them conflicted. Oh. At the same time. Might and get a nasty call from the phone company? No, no. It's no? Nothing to do. Actually, it never touches the phone company. Okay. But I'll explain how that works later.